gear up as Cash Miller and a team of accomplished guests steer you on an enlightening voyage filled with valuable tips, fresh insights, and effective strategies. Welcome to Marketing Masters, the Agency Power Show. Hello, everybody. This is your host, Cash Miller, the CEO of Titan Digital. Today, we've got Jonathan Bell, BMC. We're going to be talking Gen Z marketing. Jonathan, introduce yourself to our audience. All right. Uh, thanks for having me, Cash. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jonathan Bell uh, from you know BMC, Bell's Marketing Consultant. Um, I started my digital marketing agency at the age of 15 um, because I was denied a lot of employment opportunities because I was a really eager teenager to start making a quick buck. So um, I came across the SMMA space um, and I never looking back ever again. I love what I do. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, Jonathan, who are the typical clients that you work with? So the typical clients that we work with now are wealth management firms and, and pretty primarily in the legal sector. So, you know, estate planning attorneys, personal injury attorneys, um, and even some, you know, business contract lawyers. Um, those are primarily who we work with. Cool. So today we're going to talk Gen Z marketing and like you are like totally the person to talk to about this, you know, because yeah, you're younger, you're Gen Z, right? So, yeah, so I've got some questions, you know, like, you know, I'm, a, I'm of a much later generation. It's not Gen Z, obviously, like I, I go, I go back a few letters, you know, so, yeah, so um, let's talk, let's talk about, you know, let's start with the differences, you know, like, let's say I'm, you know, born in the 70s, I'm like Generation X and stuff, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, I, well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about the differences between, you know, like your generation and, you know, older ones and stuff. Like, what are you seeing? Because, you know, Gen Z is becoming the consumer nowadays. So, like, it's like really an important audience. And we're so used to talking, especially like millennials and stuff that have been forever. But now we've got the Gen Z stuff. Yeah. So. So, yeah. What What are you seeing? How do we market to you guys? <laughs> yeah, so to be completely honest with you, what I see in Gen Z, I think Gen Z is going to be a really difficult consumer to work with. And I'm being and I'm saying that not being mean at all towards my community at all. <laughs> but what I what I what I mean by that is I feel like, you know, if you have a reputable brand, um, you are going to have to go, you know, outside of your way to make sure that you are likable, um, you know, to the Gen Z community. You know, there's this large realm of you know progressiveness within the gen z community um and you know everyone is i what i can say is the gen z community is extremely entrepreneurial um they they are go-getters for sure there is no question about it i see it almost every single day whether that's you know scrolling on uh tiktok instagram they're extremely mm -hmm. go-getters and if they're not able to find a brand that they don't align with, they're going to go to the next brand and be as, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Be just that really loyal brand, valuable customer towards them. That's just who the, you know, the Gen Z community is. And I feel as if, you know, the TikTok, um, you know, with video content is getting really difficult, especially for brands to catch up. And that's, you know, that's kind of why I stated earlier that it's it's a pretty difficult generation to work with when it comes to the marketing side of things. Well, you work with, you know, you mentioned, you know, like wealth managers and lawyers and stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And so, you know, how do you end up, I guess, taking advantage of it? So because like you have like you have a standard size law firm and then you have some that are really big. And I could see how some that are really big are using it for additional like brand awareness and stuff. Mm -hmm. But how does, how does that average business and not just law firms, but other ones? Cause it, you know, like say there are, if you're trying to, they're loyal to brands potentially, but like what kind of brands are going to be able to resonate with them? Yeah. So when we're talking about, you know, just your average business that isn't big, but isn't small, I would really say create content. That's all I can really tell you. Um, creating content um, is is really connecting with the Gen Z community. Um, it, it resonates with us. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really sure why. 
But when I'm watching a video, I, I just feel more connected with a brand from learning or watching what their office looks like or watching what their storefront looks like or watching what certain products they offer, services they offer. So when I take this approach to our clients, I'm like, listen, if you're running a wealth management firm, the number one thing that you need to do is create value towards the Gen Z community or even the millennials because the Gen Z community, unfortunately, is not very savvy when it comes to financial education. So obviously, when we have a you know gen, when, when we have a generation like Gen Z that's coming up, you're gonna want to gain that target. You're going to want to gain that market by providing that value. And the more content that you promote, and the more content that you cross uh, platform as well. Um, I mean, it's, there's ju there's just a matter of time when you actually start seeing impressions and results, and also gaining those um, valuable. Uh, brands brand loyalty shall i say from the gen z community well that, okay so that's interesting you mentioned um the type of content so like I say you work with some wealth management and stuff mm -hmm. and you're and you said you know in the case of gen z their financial education is not really there right yeah. you know so what you're saying is like if you were a financial you know manager or something for as an as an example they want that kind of content that would educate them potentially in that particular realm. Exactly. Know? Yeah. So, exactly. For, okay. So, so what would you do? So if you're not a financial, so what does a lawyer educate? Yeah. Gen Z on, you know, mm -hmm. like legal matters, like what are some examples that you might, you know, know of to educate yeah. for a lawyer to educate? Yeah. So I actually follow a lawyer on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he is located in Houston, Texas, I believe. And what he lit, he blew up from literally just talking about state laws in Texas and how crazy they are. And then he also goes off and explains cases, you know, in a generalized manner. Um, and that's really how he gets, you know, where he is today. And I'm pretty sure he's a personal injury attorney. So attorneys out there that are probably watching this, I will highly recommend you if you are located in Idaho, talk about why, you know, Idaho is probably the least state Gen Z will go to. Um, that will really, you know, that no wonder why I moved there. You know what I mean? Or no wonder why pe less people are moving there. Maybe I should consider moving there. Let's talk about the laws. Let's talk about the policies that Idaho has. Um, okay. That's what I would really do. And I would practice that in every industry um, that, you know, is looking to grow their business or at least through brand awareness. That's that's how I feel like you can attract the Gen Z community for sure. Okay. So, yeah, you got to look at like your industry and take it potentially from an education standpoint to say, okay, you know, what is going to reach them? How am I going to help them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, be able to, to just learn more, get smarter about this particular subject. Yeah. yeah. So, so what would be some other, like, okay. Um, if you're working in the retail space, you know, mm -hmm. and like, you know, I know you got hip brands and stuff, you've got different, you know, type, but how would you go about, you know, like driving, I don't know, let's say that loyalty or really just driving interest. Okay. Cause I can't educate you about wealth management or I can't mm -hmm. educate you. You know, I'm a retail store. I've got clothing or something. You know, what, what kind of an approach would you take to that? Yeah. So what I would do, or especially for retail stores, I see it happen almost every time on TikTok as well. What a lot of retail stores do is they actually incorporate the Gen Z community via employees and allow them to run their social media campaigns and they make the fun out of whatever's in their store. So if there's a certain product for sale, they're going to just highlight it. They're going to talk about, oh my gosh, I just got this new product for fifteen ninety nine and does you know all these glorified things or day in the life of working at, you know, dot, 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 retail store. A lot of Gen Z, uh, I guess, a lot of people in the Gen Z community love seeing about the lifestyle, what the day-to-day -day looks like. And, you know, if you're working in a retail store, I'd probably say that'd be the best approach. Not necessarily, obviously, providing value, but if you're the owner of a retail store, what I've noticed what a lot of entrepreneurial Gen Z uh, members do, they really like to see how much you make in a day make it a month, make it a week. Hmm. And then you kind of explain, you know, what the operations of the business looks like. That's another thing that I would say as well. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's, you got a lot of ways to engage. Let's talk platforms for a second. I mean, TikTok, hmm. obviously everybody knows and stuff and, yeah. and Instagram, but which ones are you, and like, 
what platforms are Gen Z really engaging with and where do you see it going? You know, any new platforms that you see might have the potential because I know there's been like, you know, because all the trouble Twitter's had, there are, you know, alternatives <laughs> popping up and yeah. you know, things like that. And also, like I say, TikTok's got legal issues, you know, yes. like I said, the, our, our government isn't exactly uh, enamored with them. You yeah. Know, so, so where do you, where do you see it going? Like, what are they using and where do you see it going, you know, down the road a little bit? And, you know, also what kind of content on these platforms is connecting with them? Yeah, so what I can tell you, Cash, is the number one platform that I believe is so underrated to a lot of marketers and also maybe even business owners is probably YouTube. And I'm saying that because there is a lot of there's a lot of channels on YouTube that literally talk about almost everything that you want to know. Yeah. And what was so interesting at first, because you know, I'm a big YouTube watcher. I love watching bloggers, I love watching, you know, People's day to day, them buying a brand new Lamborghini, them going doing crazy stuff at Walmart, doing just doing all these crazy things. Mm -hmm. And then the more you watch them, the more you get engaged, the more you get interest, and the more it's like you know this person. So then that's when you know the personal brand aspect of things start getting in there. And then YouTube recently started doing YouTube Shorts, so it's basically like watching a typical Instagram story or Instagram reel, or even yeah. like a short TikTok video. Mm. Um, and then you know. TikTok, it's here to stay, um, and I can tell you there's a lot of people who are frustrated in the Gen Z community if the U.S. government were to shut down the app. Um, I know that there was another app specifically that was just like TikTok. I can't remember the name of it, but um, I know that that was here, and it's pretty underrated, too. Um, now, Instagram, I think, is an interesting platform. Um, they, you know, they're trying to get people with TikTok. Quite frankly, I don't really think it's working. Um, and I, I really hate to say it, but I feel like Instagram is starting to go down in a slope a bit because of that change. Everyone's used to, you know, seeing pictures on their feed or seeing, you know, seeing a quick video on their feed. I don't think people are ready to really start seeing videos, just videos for the algorithm itself. So that's something that I can say about that. Well, I know, let's say TikTok is, of course, they're having problems right now, like the... Yeah. You know the state go. You know Montana is trying to ban it. Their government, their government's actually passed a law that's going to you know go into effect pretty soon. But yeah. of course, TikTok's already sued them. Yeah, you know, yeah, over the law because it. And I think Montana's probably going to lose because you know it's a free speech thing too. Yeah, you know. So there's an issue. I understand. You know, with TikTok being owned by China, what kind of data? But I mean, you know, frankly, it seems like you get the data anywhere nowadays. Yeah. Um, I, you know, your point, like Instagram is always seems to be playing catch up, you know, mm -hmm. like I say, being owned by Facebook, they, they have the tendency to be a step behind everything nowadays. It just, I agree with that. Yeah. It just seems like it, you know, and yeah. so, you know, when they put in reels and stuff, it's well, it worked over here. It's what are they doing? That's original. I know the original, mm -hmm. the founders of Instagram long ago stepped away and stuff. They had difference of differences of opinion with Zuckerberg and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you, like, I'm not personally on TikTok. You know, my daughter is. Um, mm -hmm. My son is a little bit. He likes Instagram better. Um, and it might be a little bit of an age difference. You know, they're about three years difference in age. They're teenagers and stuff. Yeah. But, but you mentioned YouTube and the reels. And everybody thinks of YouTube as this, like, you know, video, video, video. But it is quite a bit of a social media site in its sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But those reels, I find myself watching them. You know, like, you get, you know, Seriously. us. I start with one subject and then it's like, you know, um, hit again and again. And, it, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. now it's because they, their algorithm is really good at suggesting stuff. You know, and it is. They, yeah. And they've had, you know, come on, you know, since like 2007 or something, you know, mm -hmm. to to figure it out. So, you know, like I say there's all sorts of stuff, but, you know, the reels are really good. So let, let's talk like um, really the types of content you know you mentioned reels and stuff like each platform can be a, a little bit different so you know what are you seeing like what what kind of content are you putting together you know for people yeah. you know to really get attention yeah absolutely uh, that's a really great point as well so instagram before it before it tried to compete, well, actually before it competed with tiktok um, Instagram was my go-to platform. I provided so much value about, you know, small business, digital marketing, small business branding, really just a bunch of marketing value every single, pr primarily every single day, um, just with graphic posts. And then, um, nowadays, since, you know, the algorithm is here, not a lot of people like to create videos. 
So what I'm doing is I'm leveraging my personal brand, um, kind of, I guess, in a micro influencer type of way. Um, however, you know, my main motive, my main goal as a digital marketer um, in this space is to really provide value to those who really just don't know about it and really want to learn. So, you know, that's tailored towards small businesses, those who want to get into marketing, um, you know, pretty much that sense. So, uh, you know, if I'm able to provide value to someone when it comes to, you know, the Gen Z community, I'd love to do it because, you know, I'm a Gen Zer. I know about, you know, the Gen Z community. I'm, I literally do the things that Gen Zs do on a day to day. So if that's, you know, something that I can do, that's something I'm very passionate about and that's something I really want to do. So if that's leveraging videos on LinkedIn, maybe TikTok, I'm thinking about it and Instagram that I'll do it. Um, but that's primarily what I'm focusing on these days. Okay. So, well, let's get, you know, cause my understanding is Gen Z really loves to absorb video and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's quicker, it's easier and stuff. So if you're, yeah, you know, a, a business owner and you're trying to leverage, you know, this and, you know, video, like obviously most of these vi videos aren't professional in nature yeah. and stuff, you know, they're, they're spur of the moment things. So, you know, if you had to put together a strategy, you know, you, you know, business comes to you and stuff um, and says, look, I want to be able to do this kind of stuff, but how do we do, do it in such a way that we can do it, you know, in a proficient manner, you know, cause like how much content do you need to be putting up? How are you going to put mm -hmm. that content together? You know, yeah. So what, what would you, you know, how would you go about it? Yeah. So looking at this as a social media manager standpoint, the first three things that we need to figure out is your content pillar. So are you wanting to promote educational and uh, are you wanting to promote um, lifestyle? Or I believe the other pillar is more tailored to um, entertainment. So that's the first thing that we need to figure out. And then once we figure that step out, then we can go onto your brand and figure out what your business is all about and then figure out what the brand and branding, how can we apply those aspects to it? So hey, let's say for example, um, someone is selling some sort of sticker, for example, someone's selling a sticker. This is a sticker that glows in the dark. This is a sticker that you can put it on cars and it looks really nice, you know, something along those lines. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this sticker and figure out a best way to literally make a hype video out of this because that seems to attract nearly anyone outside of the Gen Z community, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and then we're, we're really just going to create content circling around, you know, what people do with this sticker, the sticker just there by itself. If this, you know, does something to someone in some sort of way, rather than people just like admiring it, you know, something along those lines, that's what I'll do. So then we have, okay, we understand the value proposition of the product, so let's create that content. So if you're creating content and you're very new in the space, I would highly suggest you create content at least five days a week because, you know, everyone is always creating content every single day, especially on TikTok. The people that I follow, creating, we're creating content every single day because they want to stay relevant. They want to stay on my For You page. They want to stay relevant on other people's pages. So in order to stay relevant, especially if you know you have a product or a service, I would recommend that you stay very active on these platforms, especially TikTok, because the algorithm continuously goes and it never stops ending. Now, then if you're not wanting to go on TikTok and you want to focus more on Instagram, that's fine too. However, I feel like you're not going to have as much luck on Instagram because organic reach has decreased, unfortunately. So... <laughs> That, that's just the unfortunate thing about those platforms now. It's like you have to pay to get business or at least well, you have that, to pay to get impressions. Yeah, I mean, that's Facebook's business model to begin with yeah. since they own Instagram. Yeah, it makes sense that, you know, we tell people if you're dealing with Facebook and we deal with that platform a lot. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're going to be on there, expect to spend money because there is no reach organically until you've built up audiences in the yeah. tens of thousands, you know, because you you have to have extreme. If you have a th you know a thousand people that have liked your page or whatever, it's not going to go anywhere. You know yeah. you have to, you've got to get way larger. You've got to get people reason to engage. You do have to do it constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, to get them to do that. And a lot of times you've got to put money behind the posts and stuff. Yeah, you know, so that you can kind of jumpstart them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, you know, and if you because you can get a lot of organic reach from that post, but you might need a few dollars to get to the first people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and then if it's really good, then it will start to spread from there. But mm -hmm. you need that. You need a little, you know, you got to give it a little shove first. You know, yeah. And so 
Facebook doing the same thing to Instagram makes total sense. You know? Yeah, it's so unfortunate. It really is. But yeah, yeah. Um, how so? If you're a business owner, though, because it's one thing. Like TikTok is full of you know influencers or wannabe influencers and such. So you have. <laughs> I agree with that. So you've got a lot of people though, and they're able to do it individually. Okay, so it's not the same as running a business. Yeah, they're doing it from an individual standpoint, so they can create content on the fly all the time. You mm -hmm. know, how's the bit? So, how's the business owner that's like, you know, forty years old saying we got to take advantage of this platform? You know, how do we go about creating that the content on a daily basis and keeping up with that when we're trying to run a business? You know, mm -hmm. at the same time. So, how do you go about? You know, like I said, there's a little bit of difference between the individual creating all day long, and you know the business owner that, and maybe they assign somebody, but how are you going to approach that as a business owner? Yeah, that's actually a great question. We had a, uh, we had a client in the past that was a financial consultant. And what she did was she leveraged a little bit of educational value, but more tailored to the lifestyle of what it's like to be a financial consultant on a day to day. So, um, it, it got pretty annoying for her because it was a never ending process where she wasn't used to. Yeah. And, you know, typically business owners just really aren't comfortable getting in front of the camera. So you really have to either one, unfortunately, I have to say this, um, you're one of someone is going to have to step up and really just get in front of that camera and just start going and mm -hmm. start creating. And then the next step is you, uh, some people don't have to post every day, but it is recommended that you do personally. Um, we only post on Instagram about three, three days a week, and then we post on stories every single day. Um, but you know, for new businesses, I think it is pretty valuable that you focus on not only the quantity of content, but the quality also means just as much as so much as much as you're distributing out. And you know, the more quality content you have, the more likely it's going to get shared. So if you're able, especially as a business owner, if you're able to incorporate at least two to three days a week, just filming, just creating something that has something to do with your product, service, or your brand, or your business, or those who are working it, or those who are running it. Figure out something that is strategic, that is unique about your brand that others don't have. So that way you're able to attract an audience and that audience stays with you and is curious and they'll want to learn more about that. That's what I typically tell all of our clients who are wanting to, you know, get started in that, especially, you know, those odd industries. We've worked with, you know, a Kratom business before, and not everyone knows what Kratom is. Not everyone knows, no. you know, <laughs> not even, <laughs> not everyone knows, you know, Kratom exists. So we just had to leverage, okay, you have a very unique uh, product. So let's see if we can, you know, formulate a social media strategy and, you know, with, some SEO implementation at social media, they were on their way making sales all over the country. And even they even got some inquiries outside of the country. Um, and this was just less than a month of doing, you know, that work for them and no ads, no nothing. Everything was strictly organic. And because of, you know, their different product and how we branded it, they were able to generate sales from that. Okay, so you have to explain to me though what that kind of you know, what is it they did? So it's called <laughs> Kratom. Okay. So Kratom is essentially this powder, supplement powder that mm. increases, uh, well, it actually is pretty much for those who suffer mental illnesses. So it helps oh, you know, wow. boost their moods up. Um, it helps boost their libido. It helps literally just boost up their drive overall to just get up and go. Um, and mm. they were primarily, at, as far as I knew at the time in Springfield, they were the only ones, you know, really selling Kratom. And then you saw a bunch of smoke shops start, you know, selling that type of thing. Yeah. And then the okay. bad thing about this product is the FDA thinks it's really bad. So they try censoring it as much as they can. Mm. And, you know, this was a company that was only selling through Facebook marketplace. And then, you know, they started working with us. We branded them up, they generated sales and just never looked back from there. So we're like, okay, I guess we're running with this now. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, different products and stuff you always have to be careful of you know, what, what's allowed it's really weird too depending on you know individual platforms having their you know own policies versus yeah. what you can do online in general you know, so, yeah yeah um but okay so yeah it's interesting you know like I say to be able to take you know especially obscure things you know people that you know because you're I say we talked to education and you're trying to put that out and say, you know, let's educate the, the public on this and stuff. Now, how much, you know, 
like with advertising and stuff. Yeah. Like, what would you end up doing? You know, you've got, de you know, depending on the, the service or the product that you're going to deal with and stuff, you know, from an advertising perspective, you know, what mm -hmm. platform would be like, what's your recommendations on each on like, the, you know, we talked to Instagram and, you know, and TikTok a lot and stuff. So what's your, how would you approach advertising on the platforms? Yeah. So I would probably say if you're looking at advertising you know, on TikTok, I think people need to be really careful with that because um, the algorithm tends to be really weird a lot of the times. And I feel like, you know, if you're wanting to get noticed on those platforms, I really believe it'd be better to find an influencer um, than kind of create that campaign and do a giveaway campaign. That's what I always encourage, you know, those who have a, a product that they just want to like, just go crazy with when it comes to brand awareness. So I always recommend them to get, you know, an influencer, especially on those platforms, TikTok and Instagram. But, you know, clients like ours that we have, wealth management firms, I always encourage them, okay, if you're not looking, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I said, if you're always not looking to do, you know, social media campaigns, it's either Facebook or Google. If you want to do Google, those are basically people who are looking to find, let's say, financial advisors in your area that already know what financial advisors are. They're just looking for someone. You're likely going to pop up on the first page. Right. Now, if you're looking to do, you know, Facebook, those are primarily people who probably haven't heard of your business before and probably aren't interested. But with this campaign, our goal is to get them interested and see what your brand is all about from that ad. That's what I always tell our clients. Um, and, you know, Three, I would say four out of five times, three out of five times, um, it, you know, the strategy ends up working depending on, you know, what their overall campaign goal is. Um, so that's really what I would say. Uh, just focus on Facebook and Google. I, you know, I've heard a lot of times that Facebook is still pretty good for advertising. Um, you know, it is pretty expensive for some people. However, you know, it, it still can be pretty valuable. The audience is really good on there. Um, you know, they have a little bit of everyone. It's not just all people, Gen Z. So. <laughs> I know yeah. that because I'm on there. Yeah, like, well, I tell people, you know, it's like, I ask them, you know, what do you think the average age of, you know, the Facebook user is? And it's, you know, we're going to, it's going to be up to 40, you know, soon. Yeah. And, and then it's like, like, why is that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's real simple. The people that are on there, they never left and they started 15 years ago. Yeah. You know, so when they first <laughs> got on, they were 25 or so, you know, you know. I say, if you don't leave, the average age is going to go up and it's how many new younger users are they able to attract? And I know they're having a lot of trouble doing that, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff. A lot of the times the younger generations are only on there because of family members and things like That's that. It. So they're, they're yeah. not really engaging with the platform. They're just doing it for the rest of their family and kind of see what's going on. So they'll check yeah. in periodically. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned, um, you know, uh, influencers and stuff. How like influencers, it, it is totally a social media thing with influencers it and is. stuff. They, you know, a decade ago, there was no such thing, you know, that we knew of. I mean, the people were doing it, but it really didn't have a term, right? Mm -hmm. um, how much does Gen Z really, you know, buy into influencers, follow and rely on their recommendations? If I'm being so honest with you, I'm going to say 98% because... <laughs> With these influencers, it's like kind of going back to when I uh, talked about YouTube for a little while, um, like Lance Stewart, he is a vlogger on YouTube. He's been around for, I believe, 12 years. I subscribed to him because I love the content that he, you know, put out there and vloggers literally put their whole life out there. Like, okay, guys, mm -hmm. I'm going out to the grocery store today, blah, 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 blah. And then, yeah. you know, me as a fan, as a follower he, you know, he's always getting brand deals because these brands are looking at him saying, you have 12 million subscribers, yeah. you're generating at least three to 4 million views every single time you post. So there's clear, it's clear that you have a pretty, you know, loyal brand behind you. And, you know, every time that, you know, he has a video now, it's always, hey guys, I just got 30% off, you know, these sweatpants, um, take a look at them and then he'll demonstrate them. And then you'll put a code there and then eight times out of 10, people are going to buy from that. Mm -hmm. He gets money from it. So yeah. I can say that, you know, Gen Z, they're extremely loyal to their influencers because it's really just about what the influencers content that they're putting out there. And they, they just feel really connected with that influencer. And it's any recommendation that they have, they're going to buy. Just like my, uh, just like my girlfriend, she's really big into skincare makeup. All the influencers that she follows, they do makeup. She's going to go to Target and buy one. 
because they told yeah. us you. <laughs> so that's just really how it is. And that's something that brands are really, you know, utilizing um, is though it are those influencers that, you know, are going to pay them big bucks because they know that they're going to get, you know, uh, revenue from that. Is influencer marketing something that small businesses and midsize and stuff can actually take advantage of, though, in, in trying to utilize, you know, partnering with them and such? Yeah, I would honestly say so. It, and I wouldn't say, you know, necessarily any type of influencer. You know, if you're looking to just get brand awareness, I do believe influencer marketing is the way to go. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of factors that you have to put in for that campaign. Uh, we used to run, you know, a lot of giveaway campaigns with other brands that collaborated within that. So, you know, it was a crowdfunding thing where this brand would pay $100, like 10 brands paid 100 bucks, and then it was just one big, um, it was just one big, you know, giveaway at the end, and it was a mm -hmm. influencer at the top or organization that was well known um, in whatever area. And, um, you know, during that criteria, everyone had to follow every, uh, at least those who wanted to enter into the giveaway had to follow everyone, had to stay engaged. Um, and, you know, we saw a really great turnout in those brands. They have a lot of followers, they have a lot of engagement, their brands are doing successful. However, if you're a small business, um, obviously you probably don't have, you know, $10,000 to spend. So if you're able to collaborate with a well-known local influencer, statewide influencer in your area, and you're able to, you know, perform some sort of compromise. Hey, I don't have a thousand dollars, but can I give you 250 bucks or 500 to just shoot like a quick 15 second video explaining our product or service? Sometimes people will do it. It's just a matter of, you know, finding um, who's in your state that's well known and seeing if that, you know, seeing if that influencer aligns with your brand for sure. Have, is there any particular way that you would recommend that you would find local influencers like that and such? Yeah. Yeah, so I would say honestly, um, looking on LinkedIn, um, there's a there's a pretty big influencer here in Springfield. Um, he he used to be at the, the theater, Galois Theater. Um, I tend to forget his name all the time. I follow him on LinkedIn, but I'll, he literally provides this service where companies can come in, they'll go on his talk show and just talk about their brand, and he mm. gets paid for doing that. Um, so I would you know look at your local chamber of commerce. Um, I would look at, you know, those well-known brands, find those who they've utilized, um, type in, you know, influencers in your area, type in, um, you know, well-known people in your area, yeah. type in well-connected people in your area, and, you know, people will do it. Um, they don't have to be influencers. They can just be people who they know a lot, and it may align with your brand. So that's what I can say when it comes to reaching out to them. Okay. Um, so we're going to be wrapping it up here in a second. Um, what words, you know, advice? So you know, small, medium sized businesses, they want to connect with, you know, the Gen Z market and stuff, you know, and there's, you know, of course, there's different types of businesses that might be trying it. But mm -hmm. how, what would you give as advice to really get started? How do you get, you know, how would they get up and running? And then how are they going to maintain it, you know, long term? Yeah, so what I can say really quick is, make sure you understand what your brand is about, make sure that your brand is marketable, and understand that the Gen Z community will be loyal to you if your brand speaks to them. So if you're able to relate to them, then you have something to sell and something to promote. So go ahead and start creating content about whatever it is that your business brand or even you are about. And then simply, you know, promote that to these platforms and then keep doing this, engage with the comments, engage with the followers, do everything that you can to make sure that you have brand loyalty to your brand, and then the sky's the limit just be consistent with your posts be consistent with your engagement and also um do some fun things with your content as well it doesn't have to be so serious all the time that's what i can say okay well that wraps up everything so this has been marketing masters the agency power show i'm your host cash miller ceo of titan digital and today with me was jonathan bell bmc that's bell's marketing consultant all right, and thank you for joining us. Absolutely. That's a wrap. Thanks,